put my glasses on so I can't see a thing here. Um, my name is Robert Drysdale. Um, I've been in the roofing business for almost 16 years now. And uh, so that'll come up to my ideal here. But since uh, 2004, um, what I found a dilemma is, is that um, asphalt shingles were being buried in the dump. Um, and it's, it's non-biodegradable. And uh, me being a roofer, going to the dump every day, going into the back, and then there's uh, one garbage truck dumping here, and there's another garbage truck dumping there, and just the smell hits you in the face there. So, uh, and besides that, they send you way out in the back, um, and it's like a bush trail, eh, Jeff? You, 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 you almost need four-wheel drive to get out of there. Anyway, uh, my idea came across is that uh, I seen uh, shingles being dumped in the bush and whatnot, and I just, I, it just got to me. Anyway, so what I plan on doing is protecting the environment by reducing construction waste from entering the, the municipal landfill sites and converting that into a valuable um, byproduct for the construction industry. And I'll get to that in a minute, but basically um, my, my model and my, uh, my uh, train of thought when I started the business was is um, being honest with my customer, uh, giving them the best for their, uh, their money and giving them quality work. And when I seen this, this, this little scenario at the dump, I realized that there's a need there, okay? Um, the way they're bearing it now, they're, they're, uh, they're looking at um, um, a five-year plan and they're trying to remove a lot of construction waste out of the dump because sooner or later, landfills will be filled and then where next? So what I did was is I, um, I, did, I did some research and I realized that you know 2.25 million tons of construction waste in a landfill, that's a lot of stuff, you know? Um, that's stuff that could have been recycled into other products and it puts a strain on municipal landfill sites because shingles aren't biodegradable. I mean, they got a guy there uh, with, a, tra uh, with a, a tractor bearing this stuff because there's other vehicles that go in there uh, getting flat tires and that. And then what it does is it just brings, they have more people there um, just to take care of that, that specific um, like that's, that's one thing out of many uh, construction materials that I'm talking about. Now, my solution, that's me, a little camera shy. Um, and just to show you that I roof all year round. So roofing all year round, I realized that shingles had a characteristic to it. Um, it could take a lot of punishment. It could, they could withstand their shape for many, many, many years. I mean, roads today, how long do they last? I mean, they're, they're patching potholes, you know, left and right. And sure enough, three months later, it's back there again. You know, it's all a <laughs> magic hole, right? Eh? Um, so I did some research and I realized that RAS is a product that they're using in the States right now. And they've been doing that since the uh, 1990s. And they've been researching this, that where they're recycling asphalt shingles and putting it into a paving mix and using it as a dry pack. Now, through research and that, I found that uh, there's certain formulations and, and whatnot to, to come up to some kind of formula that would use as a dry pack. Um, 36, 36 states in the, in the United States are using this product, RAS. Um, they're using it as a, a certain formula and they use it as a dry pack. Um, Chicago actually, um, they actually paved the whole road in, in the city with this product. Now, I just found out that the, the city spent uh, 1.8 million on potholes last year. You think they spent more this year? <laughs> Try driving down there to drive here, you know? <laughs> You're like this, eh? Uh, Lawrence Street, oh my God. Like, it's just unreal. So anyway, this is the RG1, the Roto Chopper RG1. It's the only machine in the world that's made to recycle shingles. Um, what I like about this Hummer boy, it just produces uh, 60 to 90 ton an hour. 
So it, it's a powerful machine. And what's good about this is I can move it around. You know, I can bring it to another city or whatever. Now, what my plans are is basically RDC accepts shingle waste from roofing companies and charges a disposal fee. Now, the city's charging $75 or something like that a ton. I want to charge a little bit less, but where I come in is I'm a roofer. I know how they think, you know what I mean? They want to get in, they want to get out. Uh, less, less hassle, the better. And uh, who knows more? Like, I've been, in, been around for a long time, seen companies come and go. Um, but what I did was is I built it on word of mouth. Now, I have some, uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to do is stockpile it for two years because I do need a lot of material to start off, okay? I'm not gonna buy a machine, let it sit there for two and a half years till I, till I run it a run, eh? So basically, um, the, by year three, I'll purchase the roto chopper and we start producing rasps and accept shingles at the same time, so it's just getting it going there. By, um, by year three, um, I plan on selling the RAS product to paving companies, or I just might tackle that $1.8 million uh, problem there. So basically, I'm, I'm solving two problems. I'm solving the landfill sites, and I'm also solving the pothole problem. My underlying magic is 16 years experience in roofing, extensive knowledge in the roofing industry. From A to Z, I worked it from the bottom up. Um, have a better facility, quick unloads, lower price, better service. You know, I find roofers are getting the bum rap these days. You know what I mean? They work hard, you know? They wanna get home. And what better place where they can go to one area? You know, we think like them, we, we know their schedules. They come in, they come out, and they'll come back. They'll come back because uh, we don't get good treatment at the dump. I mean, uh, Day runs it. Uh, actually, Day's been running the dump ever since I've been roofing. Um, marketing and sales, um, advertising the roofers where they shop. Um, I buy my products at Roof Mart. They're in there in a day in, day out. Um, design, um, design a brochure for them. Give them an incentive as being a supplier, supplier of shingles. And I think, you know, with having that little, uh, I would say everybody's green now. They want to, you know, they want green products. They want green, they want to recycle everything, but educate them on clean loads. Um, just getting rid of all the stuff that's uh, non-recyclable in, in the load so it's easier to process. Sell to other cities the concept of recycling shingles. Um, I'm sure Timmins, Hussein Marie, all these people, they're having the same problem too. So as the third year and fourth year come along, um, I want to start drawing them in, drawing in the, the product. Now, Roof Mart, I've been dealing with them for forever. Um, the manager there, they're all over Ontario. So they could spread the word and Home Depot because um, I'm sure Home Depot and Lowe's finds out about this, they're gonna wanna jump on the bandwagon. You know, we're green, right? You know, we care about the environment. Now, my competition is Jay, uh, Day Construction. Wow, they operate the landfill. They've been doing it ever since I, I've been there. Um, they have a Peterson model, which is, I think it's a Canadian model, and it just processes wood, so they make, uh, wood chips uh, like mulch, okay? So anyway, um, basically Greensite is the other uh, uh, competition, but I find he's a roofer like me, 30 years experience, started this. With, with the money, I'd like to go and talk to him because uh, we have a lot of in common. Thank you. Thank you. The financials. I'll leave it up. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out your business model. So yep. someone, instead of going to the dump and paying $75 for whatever a it is, a ton, ton yeah. uh, they're going to come to you. You're going to charge them whatever, $65 a ton. You're going to build up a large inventory. You've got to cut it, 
and then you're going to have to sell it to some kind of pavement company, a pioneer or someone that yep. does the pavement. Have you, have you got uh, costs on what they would pay you for this? I'm just trying to understand your business model okay. and how your revenue comes because or your profit comes. The, um, the U shingles have an ingredient in it. It's called uh, liquid asphalt uh, cement. Now, they find that these older shingles have a higher quantity of asphalt shingles, so it's a better bond. Now, um, through research and that, I've seen it go up to about $800 a ton for this liquid asphalt um, uh, cement that they use to, to, to make pavement in that. Now, uh, I plan on selling it for about 150 a ton. So basically, I'm getting it at 50 a ton, producing it, selling it at 150 a ton. And uh, I have other applications for this product. So that's just my first model, but there's a lot of other applications. So you can sell it after you crunch it up? You can sell it directly as this liquid or you still have another processing cost? No, all they do is they add it into their pavement mix. But I believe their, their formula they're using doesn't last as long, dries out fast. So that's why I, uh, with this product here, I, I know there's other applications that it could be used. Now this stockpile that you would build up over a two year period, you would have a, a, a site Actually, these. I just found one last for week. These, okay. uh, I'm negotiating with um, Valley Auto. Um, mm -hmm. They have over 200 acres there. Yeah. So basically, my, my initial cost right now would be is uh, we got to build a road in there, okay? Build a road, and I need a, a scale to weigh in and weigh out. So uh, basically, I'm making, uh, what, 50... Uh, like I'm making uh, 145,000 gross a year just what, in dump where fees. Where is the cost of the unit? The unit itself, I can pick up a used one for about a quarter of a million. Okay. And, and it, it produces what volume did you say? It produces between Robert? 60 and 90 ton. And so, oh, uh, take, an hour. give us an example. One roof would generate how many? Okay, a roof, uh, an average roof, you're looking at about between two and a half ton to three ton. And it produces 60 to 90. This, uh, this machine yes. will, will uh, uh, break up the, um, the shingles at 60 to 90 ton an hour. An hour, like an hour. How many houses are we talking? About? I know. Okay. You okay. know what? I, I've been going <laughs> to the dump last week, and it just kills me because I know they're just getting buried. And this machine, uh, you got to see it because what it'll do is it'll process it. It's got a screen and everything, and then you put a 45-gallon drum on the side, and they're just spitting out the nails in there. <laughs> All you hear, ding, 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 ding. So it separates the nails, and it makes it, it almost comes out like, um, like loam. That's how soft it comes out. So um, I, it, it sounds cool. Um, <laughs> I just got some questions here. So um, have you done the, to, to gather all your contents, I'll share kind of the same concern maybe that we've got, or at least question that we've got is, how many roofs a year are being done, and how much does that contribute to the total weight per year? Have you done that estimate? Yeah, actually it's 29, they say it's 2,900 tons a year in shingles. I don't believe that. I mean, I'm there you know, three times a week. There, it's got to be more than that. There's a lot of them. They'll try to hide other stuff on top so it gets labeled as garbage. So um, as far as that, I can actually track shingles. You know what I mean? Not garbage or anything like that, shingles. So I use the 2,900 uh, 2, tons a year that's, that's a modest, uh, modest uh, amount. Um, I mean, shingles do weigh a lot. And uh, every year there's neighborhoods that are being done and how many roofers in town right now? Like I know a lot of the old timers like me, um, I can count on them, you know? Like me personally, myself, I'll do 10, 15, 16, you know, roofs a year, depending on, okay. uh, you know, now we're battling with weather. Okay. And and um, last question is, um, why isn't they doing this? They tried. 
Okay. And he had a big pile there, so we went there to unload. Hey, remember that guy there? Oh, you can't have that, can't have that. So we all got pissed off and said, frig that, we're going to bring it to the dump. You know, we're not going to sit here and argue with somebody that's being paid, you know, $13 an hour telling us what to do. So it sat there, and then one day there was a big windy day, and everybody was going back to the dump, and shingles were all over the yard. People got flats. So that's why where I am with, they're, they're off the road, they're in the middle, uh, you know, so it would be safe. Because I looked at other property beside the dump, um, the, mid, uh, the old Mid-North, they're building back there. I just can't see that, you know, shingles flying all over the place. So um, when I seen this place, I said, it's perfect, perfect. Because I can draw in Zilda, um, Lavac, Cartier, um, right up to Lively. I can draw them all there. Okay. I'm going to cut you off there. Okay. So I appreciate that, Robert. Okay. Thank you.